Well, thank you, everybody, for coming. About 10 minutes ago, we were like, oh, there's going to be four of us. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, we're just going to talk about the Bethel Library and sort of what the history is. Um, and right up front, I have to admit that um, I used other people's research. So Mary Pavoni was one of the people who did some of the research okay. for this. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And um, Minnie Brandstetter, who some of you folks may remember. Um, we also used some of her information mm -hmm. as well. So uh, I counted it up today. The Bethel Library is 132, year, 132 years old wow. in November, I believe. The first meeting was in November. Um, and I just wanted to read a little bit. There was a note from Clara Barrows that she wrote on the 50th anniversary of the library. And it's got some interesting uh, observations on it. And it was, so it was written in 1941. Um, and it says, to the members of the Bethel Library, greetings and congratulations on your golden anniversary. I so well remember the beginning of your library. The great need of a public library was felt. A few books have been donated, so a meeting in the interest of the Bethel Public Library was held. The first need was a room. This was furnished in the basement of the town hall. Next needed, funds for the purchase of books. Mr. Arnold proposed a community entertainment. Supper was served in the library room. A concert by local talent was held in the town hall. And I recall a solo by Miss C.L. Stickney. The pr proceeds, as I recall, were $8 or over. <laughs> wow. This, with generous contributions from our friends, gave us a good selection for opening day. Miss Kate Marsh kindly volunteered to act as librarian. The library from the first had the wholehearted sympathy and cooperation of our best people. And now, on your golden anniversary, you're in a home of your own, and you're ready to add a children's reading room. Wow. Can I ask a question already? Sure. How, is it golden? Is that 50? 50. It's 50. Oh, it's 75. Yeah, it's 50. Okay. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. So. So it's like 1890. Right. 1890? Yep. So there's more to it than that, but um, you guys are all welcome to take a peek at this. And it said, so I wish to tender my deep appreciation to all of you who have so grandly carried on with such great success for the past 50 years. Yours faithfully, Clara A. Barrows, who is actually noted in other places as the first librarian of the library. So. That's nice. We can pass that around, probably. No? Yeah. Was okay. she born yeah. and raised in Bethel? Clara Barrows? Uh, yeah. That's a really good question. A whole other area to research. Oh. I don't know much about her. Oh. We don't so. know very much about the first librarians. The first yeah. few. Yes. Yeah. Wasn't there somebody, Barrows, who has given history of Bethel Historical Society talks about? He worked for the Fish Hatchery. He was the Bar it was the Barrows family name. Well, Remember that? Pittsfield. Pittsfield. No, it was closer to barrels. That's the barrels I know. That's the barrels I know. That fits it. Way over there? Yeah. Right. Could it? Could it? Oh. Had somebody here, though, in that time. Somebody coming in. So, the history of the Bethel Library is it's sort of an interesting snapshot of the early 20th century. Just after the Civil War, the founding of public libraries became a priority for newly formed women's groups oh. across the nation. And that was from an article um, in Library Quarterly. These groups were the social advocates of their time, and their members understood that free access to literature and educational materials was crucial to the advancement of knowledge in society, particularly for women and the economically disadvantaged. So the community of Bethel was no different. And the Bethel Free <coughs> Library was established in November of 1892 by a group of local citizens. So there's a list of who was involved, including Miss Clara Barrows, Mr. Guy Wilson, Miss Adams, and the Bethel Library Association was created. Originally, anyone over 14 could join the library for a single subscription fee of $1, which in today's money would be about $26 or $30. Originally, there were 75 members, 55 women and 20 men. <laughs> Between 1893 and 1909, the library was located in the basement of the town hall. Um, the library was in a small dark room at the back of the building, and it was open on Saturday evenings. 
people had to walk by the lockup <laughs> to get to the library, which at that point, with multiple bars in town, was usually fairly active on a Saturday night. <laughs> so was, was um, the jail was there. <laughs> yep, yep. Frequently, folks taken into custody were uh, were there, so people had to walk by them to get to the library. A group of Bethel women, active community members and patrons of the library started to fundraise in 1907 for the purchase of the recently vacated National White River Bank building, which is that part over there. Shows it right here in this picture. It does it? Oh, yep. Yeah. There we no, go. Right here. It says yep. bank over the top. Uh, yep. So these are enlargements of pictures that were provided by the Historical Society, by the way. Um, so this is sort of how it was. And this, we think, must have been about the 60s, because we're just guessing from the cars. The but, car, yeah. Yep. So, do you remember this building, Eric? I don't. No. Neither do I. I was just How like about you, Julian. That was. So this is where we're sitting now. Is sort of right here in this area. Weird. So, yeah. What bank again was it? It the they, it was the National White River Bank building. Is it, so mm -hmm. is that related to the bank yeah. down here? Yeah, I think yes. they moved from there oh. to there. Oh, okay. we think. They built, we think. Okay. Uh -huh. But before so what they year paid, was that again? We don't. They started fundraising in 1907. I think they finally moved in here in 1909. So the, if you look at the the date on the White River on the Massacoma Bank, it's 1906. Yeah. Oh well, there you okay. go. Okay, okay yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. But before they moved in here, they were over Spalding Press. The bank or the library? Oh no, the, the, no, um, we're, we're Spalding the Press library. now. Oh. It was three stories. Uh, two stories. I'm sorry. Yeah, two three stories. stories. Yeah, it was three. Yeah. And the reason they didn't stay there was because. <laughs> the outs to get in it you had to walk up outside stairs and it was fine in June July August September but we know all after, after that and so yep. they I from what I understand they weren't open in the winter mm -hmm. um, so they in bad weather in bad yeah, weather the stairs were not um, safe but that was a much bigger room than the jail yeah so that's why uh, they moved uh, there so and it was a movie theater at this the time movie theater was at the bottom, bottom and, and then the, yeah yeah and then Spalding Crest was in the middle, middle. Okay. And then the that, yeah, yeah, it was up top. Oh. So, um, so the Marys, as they are sometimes called, Mary Stickney Bramlier, Mary Hunton, Mary Parker, Elizabeth Child, and Mary Waller all organized several fundraisers to fund the purchase of the building in the form of entertainment, lectures, and all within a four month period, if you can imagine. Um, so, in Cushing Hall, there were events, and that's the space that's above the Bethel Mills building that's being renovated right now. They did 500 parties, which was a card game, um, and ice cream social, and a festival of nations. So, for the purchase price of $2,000, the Bethel Library Association bought and renovated the former bank building, and even paid off the mortgage in about 10 years. So, yep. And what year was that? That was about uh, 1907, 1909, I yeah. believe, um, that they had finally moved in here. And then, so that would make it, what, about 1919 when they paid off the mortgage? Uh -huh. yeah. Could you say how much the mortgage, or how much the yeah. bank building was sold for? It was about $2,000. It says for the purchase price of $2,000. Mm -hmm. And this was information I got from... Um, Irene Stafford's research. That's so a, that was a lot of money for you. Yes, it, it was, was a lot of money. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, um, though the town of Bethel did provide funding for the Bethel Library and the East Bethel Library, which was in the Octagon building out there, uh -huh. um, fundraising and donations continued to be a large part of the budget through the years. So, in 1938, Mary Waller, a part time resident and prolific author, I have she's book. she's up on the shelf there with her books. Um, left the library bequest of a thousand dollars, which would be sixteen thousand dollars in today's money. So, in 1909, okay. So here's the date. In 1909, the library moved to the space above the movie theater, and then, despite the challenges, the library remained in the space for the next year until the renovations were completed, and that was in 1910. So, um, 
So that's sort of where that was at. And then in 1970, they added this piece of the building. And where I sit. Yep, and where, that's right, yep. Kathy sits. Yep. And the uh, desk that sits there is the partner desk from the bank building. They left oh. it as a part of the, oh. so. Um, they had an open house to celebrate the addition of this. And there's a little newspaper article that we can take a look at. So I might add that, that the, um, I don't know what the exact timing of this was, but, because I don't I think, think that's was, around 1970. Yeah, what, and, I, um, what I was going to say is when the bank building was sold, oh, uh, mm -hmm. and then that desk was, you know, left behind. Yeah. Somewhere in that owner, in that time for the for that uh, bank, Mary Stickney Brandlier's father, mm -hmm. William Brunswick Curry Stickney, was the bank president. Mm. Oh, that's there you go. That's, that's a good awesome. connection. I was so hoping, because I had forgotten about money transfer, about it actually yep. costing money, because I was so hoping that he had just donated. But <laughs> what's, what's maybe the catch there is that he was the bank president, not necessarily the bank. Owner, owner, right, and that it wasn't up to him and to really give the building yeah. away. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Mm -hmm. When they when the addition was built in 1970, did the library association have to fundraise for that? Was there support from the town? How did that come about? So most of it was well, from Mary Brandlier, but there is we in somewhere in the paperwork there is a list of the funding, and there was also actually some funding from. A grant from the Vermont Department, what is now the Vermont Department of Libraries, and they called we it. Couldn't figure out what it was. Federal dollars, and, and they got about twenty thousand dollars from them. Mm -hmm. um, the Brownlier was twenty-four thousand, and Mary Waller was two thousand. Right. So, so, and they were gone at that point. That, so yes, yes, they yes, had both gone. Gone. Yeah, okay. both were gone. But Mary Brownlier had worked before she died to set up the bequest mm -hmm. that provided, um, you know, some funding for the library, but also to get an architect and get the drawings. And she was really looking into the future and wanting to make sure that this happened. And this originally, in a lot of the literature, they talk about it as adding a children's room. But somewhere along the line, they changed it. And yeah, this was the children's this room. This was supposed to be the children's room. but. We now know it's that over there. So, and I think probably from what I read, it was Mrs. Dutton who changed it. Okay. All right. Who is Mrs. Dutton? She was one. She was the librarian. One of the librarians. One of the librarian. Yep. She was actually the librarian when this all happened. Oh, in nineteen seventy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so that's where we are. Um, Mrs. Brandler passed. Miss Brandler passed away in nineteen sixty-five. Um, she made all the arrangements, did the architect designs, wow. and um, it's interesting to note that even though the um, majority of the annual budget come, came, originally came from the Brandlier Trust, it was still a public library because everybody was welcome. Even though it wasn't funded by the municipality, it was still considered a public library. So, and we got a nominal contribution from the town. So, can I ask another question? Since sure. You're still on that that segment. Yep. So that mm. property next door had to be purchased as well. It was donated, I believe. Yeah. It I, was, think. I got it here. Um, it was donated. And then the cost of raising it. About six thousand dollars to take that building down, even in the seventies. I wouldn't have thought that that would be that expensive, but. So, uh, so from the very beginning, the town was always helping in some way, donating. Not from the very town. beginning, but I would say from the early 1900s, they probably the were was providing to, some funding. Yeah. The old house and removal was six thousand one hundred dollars. That must be they like, bought it and removed it for that. Yeah. Um, and then they. And, uh, Any idea who lived there? If it was a. Or who owned it? They don't say who they bought it from. That's why I was hoping Eric yeah. might know who who owned. Nobody seems to know who owned it. Mm -hmm. But it could be checked out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Be mm -hmm. And this was this was all this all <coughs> these figures were 1969 from the trustees. Mm -hmm. So. Yep. Yeah. So we do have, interestingly enough, a catalog of books from the Bethel Public Library. 
um, dated 1896. Oh, wow. So that lists all the books that people were able to borrow. Um, and they, you know, by the mid, you know, 1900s, they were talking about a fairly substantial circulation. Now, I'm not sure what their documentation was, but they talked about a yearly circulation of about 20,000 20, volumes. Oh, wow. So people oh, wow. would come in and, you know, borrow a few books and yeah. take them home. And, and you so. said that people um, pay to be a, a member of the library. One dollar for the library. When it first started, they paid a dollar to... Was to, that to, to pay for the library? I don't know. That's a really good question. I'm not sure that poor librarian sat in that back, dark, damp room yeah. for years. What, I think was she, she was the first like, was like she like, a first volunteer thing. or a paid person. It, well, that's it. I don't know the answer to that the question. First, the first one we see, she the, it talks about. They said the librarian made a hundred, made one hundred, a hundred and six thousand, hundred and six dollars. Oh. Um, and that, but it doesn't give the year. They just said library salary, a hundred and six dollars. Uh -huh. I think that was for the year. I don't yeah. think that was a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So. And what's interesting mm -hmm. in the book that so. in there, they don't list like now we catalog, yeah. you know, alphabetically and oh, and uh, yeah. numer uh, do we do? They just numbered the books. So I if you know, wanted yeah. a book yeah. by. I can't think. Thoreau. Thoreau. <laughs> you would, you'd have the librarian say, oh, that's not that's book number 126. Yeah. And so, so that's how they, yeah. oh, that's wow. how they yeah. had all the books. Uh, Are any of those books still in the library? Well, those actually, those, yep. Those three, those, so, uh, those we found when we yep. were, um, we were this is, cleaning. And, this is Milton, hmm. and this was published in 1892. So, and it was donated to the library, and I think these were uh, the the placard in the front say um, from the library of Mr. Stickney, oh, okay. William B. C. Stickney, Bethel, Vermont, and those are Thoreau, and then there's one from Rudyard, Rudyard Kipling. So that's um, I don't think it's that, that little one you've got on top. That is called the Oregon Trail. If you'd like to take a look, we can huh. see it. You know, I recall um, when I was looking up some information mm -hmm. in history that. When they made their move from the town hall to well to yep. upstairs, they had to they had to do a big calling in of all the books and they put out. Do you remember reading that in my? Yeah, I do. Yeah, where, yep. where the announcement goes out. Anybody who's got any of our books has to turn them in so that we can account for everything. All the books. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I think they did the same thing to move from that building to. This building. Probably. That would make sense. But yeah. a, longer, a little shorter trip. <laughs> yeah, no, shorter trip, but still books. You know, still books an effort. Are, yeah. Out in the world. This is getting me 14, but not exceeding yeah. three members in any family. Oh, that, yeah. the rules yeah. in the front of the book the are book really are interesting. Hysterical. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. Yep, they're in here. So you can take a peek at what the Additional original rules and regulations of the library were. <laughs> and I, lo I love that the librarian had to, if you, if the librarian didn't know you, can we open someone had to testify. Yeah, so yeah. if you came in and I didn't know you, you'd have to talk. Somebody would come in and have to say, oh, it's okay, Julie can take books out. <laughs> there you go. Each additional oh, family member, 10 cents a book. Oh, yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Not to exceed two weeks. <laughs> The but, business. <laughs> and if you think back during that time, people probably came down from wherever they lived. I mean, some people were in town, but some people were outside of town, so they would have borrowed enough books to keep them going for a no, couple of months. No, they could only take one they book, book, one book, book at, at a time. time. Oh, okay, yeah, there you go. Yeah, right. they could only take one book out at a time. All right. <laughs> so. Thank God the train stopped on Friday night. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Sense it's yeah, it's really interesting. So it's a it's a fascinating. Marguerite, you want? Yeah. So, so more recently, what I remember is, and probably all of you remember, that in 1973, mm -hmm. Miss Stafford came, better known as Irene to me. Um, she had been teaching for years in Washington D.C., Boston, history teacher, and she really had worked with Mrs. Dutton, mm -hmm. and when Mrs. Dutton, Mrs. Dutton at the time was also librarian and 
president of the trustees. So she was carrying dual mm -hmm. hat. Mm -hmm. um, so she continued being trust president of the trustees. But Irene came in, and Irene's influence when I took over the job was definitely felt in here. She traveled a lot, so she had books of work she had been traveling. She had brought a lot of her history books with her. She also never put a book on the shelf that she didn't read. <laughs> she would, and she was a speed reader. Because she would go home, or she carried, it wasn't an LL Bean bag, but she would carry a bag. The library was open on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. So in between, she would carry home a book of, I can still see her, a bag of books with maybe five or six books in them, and she'd read them in those two days. She was a speed reader. But she said, I would never put a book on the shelf that I haven't read. And so if you came in, she'd be sitting at the desk, she could tell you, <laughs> chapter and verse what the book was about. Yeah. Also, too, we didn't have interlibrary loan. So Irene traveled to um, Mid-State Library, which at that time was in Berlin. And she went every three months, and she would bring back where that shelf is now. She would just fill it with state books. So that was our kind of our interlibrary loan back then. Mm -hmm. um, that stopped when we realized that but we were buying newer books than Mid-State was buying. Mm -hmm. And we went quite a few years without interlibrary loan. We now have a wonderful interlibrary loan system. Um, it's called the Courier System. If you come in and ask for a book, usually if you ask on Monday, the following Wednesday it's here. It's dropped in the back, and we don't even pay postage anymore. Um, anyways, Irene, she, when I, it was really hard for me to walk in here and be like Marina, because I had watched Irene. She did so much. She did story time. She did book discussions. She just lit this place up. She was, she was the Bethel Library when my kids were growing up. And, and she was actually the one that said to me, you ought to take some classes and come work here. Little did I know. <laughs> uh, computers have changed the library. That's the biggest change. Um, when Irene was here, it was rotary dial, telephone, yeah. or typewriter. Not even electric, it was the old clink, clink, clink typewriter. Um, when computers came in, I saw a huge change in the library. Books still go out, but people come in to use the computers. And we, this is now our third set of computers. Mm -hmm. Also, too, the other big thing that's happened is people want to listen to books. They don't. There's some of us that still want. I still want to hold the book. There's a lot of people that still want to listen to that want to listen to books because they're traveling. We don't have to carry a book. So we now have what they call Libby, which if any of you want to sign up for it, it basically you can get books on your phone on the on the computer. Mm -hmm. um, that is. But I just see that if I could say what's the biggest change in the library, that would be it. Technology. Um, it has really changed the library. I, I don't see as many little people as I would like to see, but the ones that come, they, they really, they, they are here. Um, Mindy Bramstetter, and I just have to read this because I think it sums up, to me, what a library is. I'm not going to read the whole thing, I just, I highlighted. A library is a magical place. You can go anywhere. Learn about anything you want. You can, <coughs> you can browse, and you can be caught up in the world you, knew ne you never know existed. There, will, there, there are some that say the library will become extinct. Yeah. Should we begin to have save, uh, become extinct, like save the whales, save the owls, and save the rainforest? Maybe we should have a save the library campaign. It is my belief that as long as there are children who need a bedtime story read to them, um, and she listed them, Peter Rabbit, Cat in the Hat, or Miss Nelson is Missing, we need libraries. As long as there are kids who need fictional friends, we need libraries. So long as we are hardworking people who need to relax with a good book, we need libraries. Senior citizens in want of good mystery, good company, as long as they have the desire to and an affordable quality literature and current fiction available the America, into America, we need libraries. Mm -hmm. And I just, I do, I think of the library as a magical place. Mm -hmm. And it just, 
And so when we had the Did Mindy work here for a while? I mean, Mindy was a was trustee. Oh. Mindy was a trustee. Um, I thought she had worked here, but as we dug in, she was a trustee. Um, I, yeah. She might have worked at the school library. I'm not 100% sure. She worked at the school for a while. She long worked time. at the school. Yeah. I'm not sure if she was in the Teaching. library or not. But she, um, yeah, she was very. She, uh, I remember her, and uh, the other person that um, we should mention that did story time forever was Bobby Perez. Oh, yeah. And she, I, yeah. my kids still, to this day, they can yeah. still, they said, Mrs. Perez, you, and she, I'm sure your kids too, Joanne, yeah. she'd yeah. put on a little bonnet and she'd be the old lady, and she'd take the bonnet off, she'd put another hat on, and she'd be the, she just had a gift for storytelling. And um, she was a big part. Of the, of the storytelling. Mm -hmm. Book discussion back then was pretty much to the state. Um, Irene would get a book and it would give like a Civil War and then it would list six books and six different people that would come and talk. Um, by the time I came that had pretty much dissolved and we didn't have book discussion for a while and now we okay. have two book groups that meet here. That's the other thing. The library has become more like a community center. Mm -hmm. We have people that use it for quilting classes. We have people that use it for knitting classes. We have um, playtime is going to start in September here two days a week. Uh, people just, I think it's kind of become a community center, mm -hmm. which is what so most of the library So what's your playtime doing? Um, you said it's in the morning. Yeah. It's early in the morning. morning. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, or like an Orange hour. County, uh, Orange County, Orange County Parent Child Center is yeah. a couple of preschool play groups. Yeah, yeah. yeah. for an hour. Or something. Yeah, a couple hours. hours. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then so a couple of times I'm going to come read to them. Oh. Okay. Um, but most of the time she just wants them to get used to being in a library. Oh, nice. Yeah. 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 Tell us a story about going up to the berry and getting like a bunch of books yeah. to bring down yeah. and use, yeah. and yeah, then totally. taking yeah. them back. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and the other thing is too, it used to be library was shh, well, right. yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you could have been here for teddy bear sleepover, there's no requirement. <laughs> <laughs> the, kids, the kids feel very comfortable. Um, um, the other thing I should mention too is the children's room has done a complete change. Uh, we were putting in carpet and the flooring, and I had to pull everything off the shelves, and I put it in boxes on the floor. Prior to that, there had been this long, bookcase down the middle. Right. Yeah. So I put all the books and I even moved my bookcase out and the little kids are coming in and I'm seeing them. They're sitting on the floor and they're going like this looking for books. And I thought, oh, uh, okay. That makes a heck of a lot more sense than looking at a book like that and they can't read. Okay. So I called George Burnham and I said, George, I want to train. He goes, okay. And I said, no, I want to train for the children's book. He said, so he came down, typical George, he came down and took two books home with him calls me and he goes, your train's done. I mean, we're talking less than a month. Mm -hmm. Janet had painted it and George had created the train and that's how the children's books came. Also, I should mention this, Casey, the giraffe. Norm Case won that at the penny sale. Norm, didn't have, Norm for those of you who don't know him, could not see. So he had no idea what he'd won. So Carol is telling him he's won a giraffe and he says, what am I gonna do with that giraffe? He said. Well, give it to the library. <laughs> so that's how the library, that's, that's how the giraffe came here. So there's so many stories, if the walls could talk, yeah. Yeah. Oh, they, yeah. they could tell us all these yeah. great yeah. stories. Yeah. We've written down a lot of it, yeah. And the, and the, the giraffe, the giraffe story is just too precious because I walked in and I didn't know that Norm had won the giraffe. And I walked in and the phone's ringing and I got a little girl that come in to get books and she looked at me and she goes, where'd you get that giraffe? And I said, I don't have a giraffe, sweetie. And the phone on the other end is going, yes, you do. And it's Carol. It's Carol. And they had brought it now down, put, do. it in, put it in. Yeah. And they talk about that Norm drove the car down with it. Oh, <laughs> right. Sure. Yeah. 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 And a couple of these desks, that desk there, and the one over in the corner, those are originally from the bank, too. Which I had decided I'm going to put little things underneath so people. Oh, people so we know. Yeah, yeah. 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 important. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't know that the giraffe was named Casey, so is Casey? his name around his neck somewhere? Well, what happened was the, the giraffe came, and the kids kept saying to me, what are we going to name the giraffe? Mm -hmm. And I thought, <laughs> so I said, okay, we're having a contest. It's, they were writing down names. Well, she's now married and got children. And Jessica Durfee said, I think it should be Casey after Mr. Case. Mm -hmm. 
The okay. winner. That's, that's, why yeah. Yeah. that's why he's called Casey. Yeah, that's why he's called Casey. So that's a good little story. Yeah, yeah. 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 It needs to be put on the tag that you put around his neck. I did for a long time, but you know how things. He does wear an engineer's cap, though. Did the um, <laughs> it, oh, is Mr. Case? Uh, Pardon me. Is Mr. Case a trained person? Mr. Case was a lawyer here in town, and um, he was blind. Yeah. And he was a trustee for hmm, ever. So and ever. The engineer's cap. Yeah. You said he had the giraffe is wearing an engineer's cap. Engineer's cap because of, he stands over the train. Oh, the, the oh. train. <laughs> I knew that. If yeah. I could just say something, I worked for Mr. Case um, for like six months when I first married and moved to Bethel. And he, he was blind. But so one of the things I had to do was read him deed descriptions, which had oh. the, you know, the direction, right. how many. Uh. And in his mind, he would be able to plot out, you know, you went north and then you went east and then you went south. And he would say, you haven't, no, we didn't come back to the beginning yet. We haven't, meet, you know, he, he could see it in his yeah. mind's eye. Oh, he was nice. brilliant. So he was brilliant. He was yeah. just an incredible, yeah. Yeah. incredible man. So he had had sight at some point. I, I think he lost the sight when he, he was a very young child. About seven or I was eight, something like that. Yeah. In order to have that reference, yeah. he must have had he sight. Had got the, he had got measles. Correct. Um. And his mom put, what acid was it in his eye? It was either bark or... It was, the, it was the wrong one anyway. The yeah. doctor told her to put this in his eyes and it was the wrong one. Yeah. Uh, but he went as to... As a wash. Yeah, he went to college. Um, it's, it's probably the best compliment as a house painter I ever received. I was painting his house and, and he <laughs> oh, came geez. home and he said to me, he says, Eric, I can see my house. <laughs> he could see shadows, right? Pardon me? He could see shadows. Yeah, at that time he could. Yeah. Later on... Everything yes. went, but he, yeah, mm -hmm. it was the probably the best compliment I ever got. Well, I can still see him in yeah. Dorothy, mm -hmm. and she would drive him to work, yeah. and he would have his what kind of hat? What is it called? Fedora. Fedora. Fedora, and his raincoat and his umbrella, and she he would have his hand on her arm, and she'd walk him to work every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. She was. Where did, Where did he have his office? Up over the bank. Over the yeah. bank. Yeah. The current bank building. Yep. Yeah. Oh. And it was just blue with yeah. smoke. So he smoked cigars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can remember going up there and going, whoa, Norm. Yeah. 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 When did you become librarian, Kathy? Uh, 94. 94. 94. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. 30 years. 30 years. Yep. Yeah. 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 So going for another third. Just to go, go back a little bit to the eight, uh, the two thousand dollars. Yes. And, and that was in nineteen ten. Yeah. Or around it, there. It was a nineteen seven, nineteen. And that's what it cost to buy the building, right? Yes. Yeah. So in eighteen twenty three, they built just as a historical res reference, they built the church that I that. You're right. Oh wow. Right. Okay. For eighteen hundred and ninety dollars. Oh, oh yeah, all right I, then. And then in 1846, they built the church in town for $2,190. So, okay, it, not so much off. It, right. I yeah. mean, things didn't. Yeah, this one is. Pretty inflation pretty really didn't move along. It right. wasn't that bad, I guess. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But and then on the books on tape, um, that that's what my father-in-law, being blind, yeah, that's what he does. Yeah. He listens to books on tape. Yeah. And then. My mom was born in 1931, and she has numerous Nancy Drew and right. those right. types of right. books. Right. Yeah. And if you open them up, on the, the cover is inscribed um, to Joyce on Christmas 19. Yeah. You yeah. Know, they, that's what they got for Christmas. Oh, right. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they were overjoyed with them. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. Yep. As you're leaving, too, Eric found when <laughs> in the barn, wasn't it, Eric? Yeah. There's two sculptures that Mary and Mrs. Brownlee air. I mean, Eric walked out carrying these two, and I thought I thought it was Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> he goes, "No, that was her father." <laughs> but he didn't look like a lot like Teddy. But they were her sculptures. Yeah, they were right. her yeah. sculptures. Yeah. They're and they're for yeah, they're on the shelf. They're, oh, they're in the Mary, 
Well, Tony knows that one of them, or at least we think, is one of, one of them is her brother. Her brother, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's a, well, that's what I tell people. Yeah. So. And the other thing that's in that barn that is pretty amazing to me is um, William Stickney's all his law books. Oh wow! Oh, that yeah. is interesting. And they're up there, but yeah. Oh my God, the did they stay there? Where? Oh. In the barn. In my barn. Your barn. I did. In boxes and. Like there's three or four boxes of them. Really? The, oh. My favorite thing to do is to open them up and just do that with the pages and see if anything falls out. <laughs> <laughs> Wishful thinking. Ah, yeah. yeah. oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> and we should say that Joyce, Eric's mom, was her her that, her goddaughter. Mrs. Her goddaughter, yeah. Mrs. Brownlee, was her oh. goddaughter. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I never knew her. I know a lot of people say well, you should have known her. I do no, not. And I don't. I, I was seven years old when she died. So yeah, I so should six. Have, I mean, yeah, but, but I no recollection and, and at you, all. You didn't, and you would have been a teenager, right? Sixty-five. Yeah. I would have been somewhere in high school. freshman. Yeah, seventh grade freshman. Mm -hmm. So but I just never. She kind of stayed in her house as she got older. I think because well, I don't remember hearing about her. Probably at your church. Was she still going to church at that Good point? Good question. I don't know. I, just, I would imagine. I just recently read that, oh, I know, it was on, I recently found her death certificate on Ancestry.com, and uh, uh, I don't know that they're set up quite the same way, but there's a little bit of background, and she um, she had very severe arthritis in the last years of her oh. life, oh. and so I think that more than anything, that and a major part of the year is not really congested. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, to getting out and about, and maybe she wasn't driving anymore either. So, yeah, it's just kind of yeah, makes sense. We yeah. should do some. We should do a thing, uh, just a history talk, just on Mrs. Bromley, or that would oh, be yeah. really interesting. Yeah. So that the house that's in question there, you know, <laughs> this one, we we drag our feet about asking. Old timers about these things. And I know. It's lost. Now I would I would imagine like someone like Chuck Adams might know. Oh, someone sure. like, oh maybe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Know. Yeah. Um, We've been trying to think of somebody that would know. Or just, just doing the legwork, going back into the deed records. Yeah. Oh yeah. Which would do that. be down at the town office. Yeah. yeah. Well, in case somebody just knows it yeah. right yeah. off. Uh, but, yeah. Um, That's lo it's be so much easier to ask someone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and probably more interesting. Yeah. 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 But I don't Chuck because of building maybe right right yeah, yeah. That? even Scott Putney might know oh, oh well there you go right across the street have a foundation in the house and okay. yes. look at the picture up above them right it's when like you, totally different it's a different yeah. house yeah. Well, it was. Well, you know, it still, it was still. It looks like it sunk into the ground. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just gonna say, I think it sunk into the ground. You, you right. notice that in the top picture, there is quite a depth between the road mm -hmm. surface yeah. and the sidewalk. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Now look. Now look yeah. at the bottom picture in okay. the house. I know, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, and it's I'm true. The streets were the streets were lined with trees. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. that too. Yeah. I find all over the areas, new to me since I've only lived here ten years, nine years, but. Yeah. Land sunk. sunk. Oh. <clears throat> right now, I have trouble getting into the sandwich shop. In that top picture, I don't know if I could have. If you see where the road surface is compared to yeah. the sidewalk, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So there is some ecological issues with oh. water. Mm -hmm. And I think in this picture that it's still dirt. The road it's is still, still dirt. dirt. Well, yes, so by the is. time you pave it several times, it's it and comes look up. At the, look yep. at what's the bank. Yep, and it's yeah. gone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It all changes. The infamous steps, they're there. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, too, if you can see, there's the chimney right there too. Oh and it yeah. It talks about it. Talks about it's someplace we read it where people donated the wood to keep it warm. Mm. So there you go. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. for the bank building. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, yeah. The, it, so it had it been in the back. Mm. I, I, it's hard for me to visualize um, it's such a yeah, small it's room. Yeah. They yeah. couldn't, you know, mm -hmm. just like, mm -hmm. yep. yeah. Now I remember the house on the other side of the bank. That, like, that one, yeah. yeah. Um, where, the, where Pat lives. Right. Yeah. But she didn't yeah. live there back then. No. And that was, was um, when I was a kid, it was John Gilmatt. And, yeah. And um, I think the Morris family lived yeah. there. 
And when Gary and I first got married in 1972, we had an apartment in that building. It was a yellow, oh, nice. it was four, four yeah. apartments. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. My With question the, the other, other yeah. day was, I wanted to, I was trying to figure out um, the house that Guy Wilson and his wife lived in, and I, I, I had a picture from the Historical Society, but I just, I can't. The Fisher House, it's called the Michael Fisher House, and I have no idea. Is that the one that burnt, Eric? I don't know that. It's I, this one right here. It's the one right here, this little yellow house. The blue house? Blue, okay. Hmm. Yeah. One of them. That's what I think it is. That's where Guy Wilson lived, then. That's well, where Guy Wilson lived. It would have been this one here. No, going the other way. Oh, and this, no. No, for, no, no, yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, it would have been that one. Does that, I can't see, does that no. all look like the one to the man's next door? When we were kids, yeah, Eric, I think it was, one of, it was the uh, Dr. either Gilman or Dr. Ballou. Right. And yeah, so do Guy you Wilson, when yeah. I gave my talk, he and his wife were married in one room in there and died in that same room. Oh, so wow. that was, but I just, I couldn't remember. As, the life of me where he so, lived, you know, so where this, that house was. This is that little house, the same house that's still there because it has the mansard roof. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. can't tell what color it is, but so it's yeah. a yellow one. Yeah. Whatever yeah. that's yellow. Yeah, it's whatever color kind of tannish. Tannish. Are you finished? Yeah, yeah. We always called it the blue block. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The blue, oh, the blue block and the yellow block. Yeah, yeah. 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 it used to be blue, right? right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I did not realize until you gave a talk that he had a heart attack. That's how he died. I didn't realize that. What's that? Mr. Wilson. I didn't realize he had a heart attack. I know. Yeah. Yeah. He was one of the trustees here. What a neat thing that was because I was struggling to figure out who I was going to do. And um, Shelly and I stopped at the cemetery and she took three names down. And one of them was Guy Wilson. And she found that obituary and it was like, Eureka! Yeah, <laughs> and there you go. Yeah, yeah. Just enough ammunition for me to be dangerous. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. Did the library ever have books See, no. delivered around, you know, a vehicle of wagons? wagons? No. no. There was a bookmobile, but we didn't have one. Yeah, the road. Um, yeah, that's what But we never fun. had. To my knowledge, I in Vermont in general, I think it started out that way. There were like crates of books that would go to a neighborhood and people would borrow them there and then they would go back to wherever the central location was. And I read that when I was doing um, the research for this article and I think it was maybe the American Library Association or something that said in rural areas that was very common. And Bethel was? A rural area. Yes. Do you have any idea of I mean, like how Bethel yeah. um, stands yeah. relative to other towns oh, in terms yeah. of when they first started the library? Yeah. You know, in terms of, no. a, of a ranking or a, no, no, no. I don't, but I want to look it up now. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about it last night and I didn't look it up, but um, we're not the oldest library in Vermont, but pretty close. I mean, you know, it's so. But I'll look it up and we'll, we'll put it. She's noticing there are more steps. Um, to the walkway now, you know, mm -hmm. because the road was, yeah, it's, yeah. you have the more the steps road now. You have more steps now. Yeah. Yep, you're yeah. right. Yeah, more steps. Yep. Huh. Yes, there's the walkway, that first step, and now there's another run and more steps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and I, oh, I really I think, think that, that uh, talking about, like, how, how early Bethel's library got started, it really has so much um, relationship with that group of women mm -hmm. who said, we're going to mm -hmm. do this. Yeah. Yep. I mean, like Mrs. Harrington had come from elsewhere, but right. she was a contributor. And, yep. and Elizabeth Child was uh, a force of nature. And, yep. and so were the others. And, and, you know, and Mary Waller, who, again, had a life and a persona right. outside, of, outside of Bethel, and they all wanted to see it happen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we might you know have something? been postponed by decades if if that yeah. hadn't happened. Yeah. If they yeah. hadn't if they hadn't made yeah. it their mission. Yeah. Yeah. And they yeah. definitely it was their mission. Mm -hmm. It was definitely For sure. yeah. 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 I think if you look back in the history of any community, including Beth, you can find it was the woman that that's that's what when I was doing the research for this several years ago they said it was very much post Civil War 
and it was women's organizations that even definitely took that. the yeah. But even before that, yeah. it was the women that got things started. In yeah. The school, church, or mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. There's also on the wall here before I I'm sure you've all seen it. It um, a proclamation that was given to us when our, at our 120. Mm -hmm. anniversary. Um, I contacted <coughs> Dick McCormick. McCormick and he got a proclamation from the state and it's very, they did a really great job. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and that was when we had, we did an ice cream social because mm -hmm. they had said they had an ice cream social and so we did an ice cream social and then we also had, that's how our Mother's Day tea started mm -hmm. and that's in memory of Mrs. Mm -hmm. Lonely, yeah. So we try yep. to keep her yep. name alive. And that's her portrait on yeah, the other side of the wall. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. They, it came that way, so it needs to Well, thank you, everybody, for yeah. coming. It was fun. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Oh, are you interested in a story from an outsider? Sure. 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 Yeah. At the age of seven, I was brought to the Scarsdale Public Library, presented at the front desk, and the librarian, who was very tall, stood up, came to the desk, and gave me a three by five card that I had to read aloud to prove that I could read. <laughs> um, now, I studied at Oxford University in 1977, and you went into the university library, and there is a Don, obviously wrinkled face, tall, skinny, he's got a robe on, and you had to swear that you would not carry a lighted taper into the library and several, several other things relevant to the 1600s. <laughs> uh, anyhow, um, I don't know that you want to start that, but I had, I had to prove that I could read. Yeah. And what library traditions were, yeah. you know, back in the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. All right. When Lisa was talking about a dollar, that was for your life. That dollar you paid oh, yeah. to become a member was for life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, so, yeah. so you got your dollars. Why did they stop that practice? Uh, Irene stopped it, and I can't exactly, I don't exactly remember when, but what I know I paid my dollar. The so time was the time frame she was in? Uh, she was from 1973 until 1994 when yep. I took over. Oh, and she, yeah. she may have felt that there were enough people who couldn't afford the dollar. But. And the other thing is too, sometimes, I don't know whether, I know as far as we could, sometime in the 80s, we had to stop charging people for overdue books. That came down from the state. So, thank yeah. God. Yeah. I, uh, that two cents a day just really was. <laughs> just go to Eric's bar and he'll have. You will go. make your money. I'm not a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> you can bring your books back now, Eric. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank you all for coming. And please use the library. Yeah. We don't want it to become yeah. extinct. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the little pamphlet that's out on the desk has just sort of a snippet of what the history was. This is mostly information from Irene. Right. Uh -huh. this, she wrote this. We've updated it with a little bit of our, our new uh, logo, but uh, yeah. other than that. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, the little case of the giraffe. Oh.